Ravel's 1969 Baldwin Motion Corvette. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again everybody, my name is Trevor Oslescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And welcome back to another great unboxing review video as we take a look at the 1969 Corvette, the Baldwin Motion Edition by Ravel. This is an amazing model kit, goes together really nice and has had a lot of reboxings in its past. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of those old boxes as I walk down to our bench and we get to take a look at what's in the box. Now we wind the clock all the way back to 1969 and this is the second year of the brand new C3 Corvette with a lot of improvements to make the car better like the new door locks and a few other components on here. Baldwin Motion is actually a combination of two companies out of New York. Baldwin Automotive Co Company, pardon me, and motion performance joined together to make up some really crazy cars back in the 60s high performance corvettes and the like so looking at our ravel box of course we have this beautiful artwork here and then turning it onto the side we do get a whole bunch of the story and details of this model kit right on the side of the box Fully detailed 427 big block engine, custom wheels and hood, authentic Baldwin motion decals. It's molded in white, transparent red and clear with chrome, chrome my favorite, plated parts and black vinyl tires. We also have a painting guide over here for all the paints and whatnot you'll need. The length is seven and three quarters inches. It's got 98 pieces and it says body molded in white. And of course, as we can see here, we've got the official GM licensing going on. This kit comes from 2002, the end of the box is much the same. Here we get some great pictures, skill level 2 for ages 10 and up. But there's our 427 rat motor sitting underneath there, as well as the um, overhead three quarter shot where you can see how the decals go on here. This was a unique stripe to Baldwin Motion for these Corvettes. Now just moving this back a bit. There's the end of the box again. Now this one is not one of those Ravel flip tops, but luckily, normal size box, normal style I mean. We get of course our instruction sheet with all your great Baldwin motion uh, history and goodness on here, which we'll look at in a little while. Then we've got a decal sheet in here. Interior, underneath, the body itself, and this is a beautiful Corvette body. I've built a few of the uh, Ravel kits that we saw in the opening there with our box arts. You actually get two hoods in here. There's one style with that scoop. Yeah. Our chrome, our delicious chrome right there. Then of course white parts. More white parts. Your rubber tires on the old tree. Goodyear's GT radials. So a little more modern than the 60s tires. Or maybe that's when the radials started coming in. Have to look that up in my history. <laughs> There's our engine block, inner fenders, and the bucket seats. And then the rest of the car parts. Interesting on this thing here. If you can read it, it says the different colors these were molded in at one point in time. Orange being one of them. <laughs> then what do we got here? Our glass. That, it goes under the hood and looks like someone started to paint it. Probably me. And taillights. 
And there's our other Corvette hood, the different type. That's, I think, the Baldwin Motion one. And this one, I believe, is the stock hood. Just got to get the light. There, see the different hoods? Hang on. There we go. Different style scoops. Okay, so there's our empty box. So I'm just going to clear this out of the way and we'll come right back and check out our instructions. Welcome back model builders and now we're going to take a quick look at our instruction sheet here. Maybe not so quick, I don't know. <laughs> but here we have the instructions for our Baldwin Motion 1969 Corvette. And this one folds out into two wonderful pages. Well, a full pager, I guess. Uh, here you've got your write-up on the whole car and the history. you got to read this before you begin in both English and French. And then we have our paint call-out code here. And if you have any questions or comments, you can call the Ravel hotline, which I don't know is still around or not. <laughs> anyway, we can open this nice instruction sheet up. And here you can see all the great full panels. So we'll just take a look at this one by one. Here we have our engine assembly, and as you can see, it's a two-piece block with the transmission molded on. The harmonic balancer and everything is also a part of this engine, like molded in place. You've got your rocker covers, your cylinder heads, your intake manifold, your tri-carbs, going under that nice triangular air cleaner that Corvette had. The 427 decal on there, which is nice. Individual oil filter, you can glue on, paint it white or whatever you want. Exhaust, the alternator, fan belt assembly, the water pump, your fan, and then a separate starter motor and a separate fuel pump. Now when Corvette did these, of course the fuel pump was glued on and they just painted everything. Actually it says it's chrome. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, there's our engine and now we'll take a look at the rear suspension assembly. And here's our multi-piece rear suspension assembly with the semi-elliptical spring in the back, just like a Model T. You got your differential here with the trailing arms coming out and these supports, as well as a differential top. And then that spring goes in, and then this all mounts to the frame, and you get two rear shock absorbers which mount up top in here. So a very beautifully well-executed rear suspension assembly, and of course the wheels snap on and lock in place. Now we get into the multi-piece front assembly. The coil springs are chromed and there's a left and right hand side to both of them. Then the lower suspension will glue on into there. And again we have the little pegs on our king pins which lock in the wheels. Then as we move this down here, we have a tie rod going up into the front. Then our radiator wall and radiator and fan shroud all glued together and glue onto the frame. And then as we carry on, we also have the frame cross member. These two little notches are for exhaust pipes to slip under on a stock version, but since this is a Baldwin motion, it's something a little bit different gonna be happening pretty soon. You got a steering box that also glues on here, so making up a full entire front assembly. Next we get into our drivetrain assembly, which of course involves the drive shaft and the motor being glued in into the rear differential and then the lower radiator hose gets snaked into the front of the radiator then up top we have the top radiator hose which goes into the radiator and locks in on the intake manifold and then we have a little bit of additional assembly for our front end and that is the a arms which glue onto the frame again then in panel 5 we get into our wheel assembly which shows the three piece wheels so you have your outer I do believe these are American racing wheels going in here your GT radial tire and then the inner wheel back all popping together and then it pops onto the axle and it says here no glue so that means it'll click in and rotate in place and that was a typical design for monogram kits or monogram Ravel kits step six is our interior assembly and this is sort of a combination of a bucket tub type interior but it does have separate individual door panels molded in and that's always good because the door handles and the armrests come out perfect in these situations then we have our dashboard here and the steering column and the steering wheel. 
and that all pops in nicely into the the interior pan then we have our shift lever which is chrome and drops in and an emergency brake handle which clicks into the center just like a real Corvette then as we move down here we have our Corvette seats for 1969 with a front and a seat back and a headrest glues on the top then both seats pop into the floor and our seventh step is the body assembly and these are always nice these tail lights it gives you the painting note in here and then uh, you glue them into the chrome taillight bezel and then pop them through the body then down here just move this up we have our license plate so you want to scrape the chrome off there and there those little tabs and then you can glue it in here scrape your paint off where it's going to contact of course then we have the 60s chrome rear bumpers with the glue onto the back and it's showing you here there's a decal for the Corvette name then the cool part here is the hood goes in and the front bumper goes on and then your inner fenders will glue in and they have notches in here for the pins on the hood to lock it in place which always works out really nicely the eighth step in all of this is our window and body assembly and as you can see it's got separate molded windshield and rear window which go in there and there and there's little pins for the front here as well as the rear view mirror which drops into a center hole I believe and then our interior tub pops into the body then down here let's scroll down <laughs> you have your firewall wiper canister brake booster and master cylinder and all of that clicks in here there's some slots for it I do believe and then the chassis can pop right into the body now remember when I said in the brace you pass the exhaust pipes through that's on the stock version but for Baldwin motion they used these nice lake pipes that sat off the side and there's little extensions here exhaust pipe extensions that will glue into the block in the manifolds and then these glue onto the side so you got to scrape any paint off that lower edge and then glue them on and then here we have our side mirrors gluing on the uh, racing gas cap that pops in and then it's showing all your decal placements and everything and finally panel 10 is the decal placement itself so here of course you got your white Baldwin motion stripes and all the rest of the goodness that goes on it and that completes our look at the Baldwin motion instruction sheet now let's take a look at our plastic components And here we have our body for the 1968 Corvette. And it does look like I started to sand this down a little bit. So usually along the tops of the fenders there is a seam line on the kit as you get it out of the box. This of course has the 1969 Corvette, the proper doors. Because in 68 the door latch actually popped out. It was like divoted in and everything. It's of course got the shark gills in here stingray type gills and then the sunken in rear window which is typical of this era overall a very nicely well executed body of course you get your little Corvette logos on top of the gas filler cap and Corvette written across the back here there you go usually Ravel does very good on their bodies and everything I do believe there's a couple of sink marks originally in here and here, which I seem to have taken care of. Front end is really nice and goes together quite beautifully, actually. And next up, we have the SS427 Baldwin Motion style hood that comes with this kit. You get this nice flat air scoop, which is pretty cool. Underneath, you have some matting. There are a couple of mold marks in here. And one other thing, now I, I don't know if this is actually in the kit or if this is from a different 68 Corvette. This of course is the L88 427 hood, which is more of a factory stock style hood. 
And again, that has some sink marks in there. And I do believe this was the hood that, uh, that this black piece actually was in, which of course would hook up to the big circular air cleaner. Sort of a ram air kind of thing, maybe. I don't know. But at any rate, you want to see how this fits into the body. So again, it would go in like this. And then those fender skirts would hold it in. But you can see the beautiful fit and finish on this hood. Once you get it in place, there's just a little gap around the edge, which is the proper type of clearance you want for your Corvette. Next up, we have our interior tub, which of course is quite nice. It's got these little tiny doors in here, which were used for storage on the Corvette. Then we've got our console mounted in here with, of course, our gear shift area where the lever would be coming out. Then these sunken in areas are for our door panels. There is some nice carpet molded in there. There are some sink marks, but they're right underneath where your seats are going to be. So, of course, they're easily hidden. And underneath, it's nice and smooth. So, very good interior tub. And now we have our chassis sitting here. Which, of course, you're looking at it from the side that you'll never see. <laughs> uh, you will see up under the hood here. So let's just turn this over and you can see the amazing um, spare tire right here and the fuel tank and our perimeter frame. This of course would be mounted to fiberglass like in there. Again very nice detailing going on here. You can see all the great works of it. Of course this tire was a pain back in the day because in order to change a tire, you have to get this out of the way and the whole deal. And you're doing that while the car is jacked up and you're on your back and all this kind of thing. So really the C, C2 Corvettes were the last Corvettes with the tire in the trunk. And then in this era, there was no more trunk. So again, very nice detail on this component. And now I just want to show you how the body and the interior and everything go together and fit nicely on this kit. There are a couple little tabs here in the body which will hold the interior bucket in the correct place. And then our chassis will pop in here like this. And it locks into the sides. So scrape the paint off in here and along the edge on your chassis and then put glue on both sides and you got your Corvette locked in place. Now of course this is going to need those fender aprons but again you can see how nice and tight it is in here. This kit originally came out in 1989 and has been a beauty of a kit ever since. Next up we have those inner fenders as well as our front bucket seats and our big 427 engine with, of course, the water pump sitting here. And you can see some very nice, fine detail work on, there we go, on the seats, as well as that engine block and the transmission. It's got all the proper ribbing and little cables in there. And then our inner fender aprons. Of course, there's a couple of mold marks on there again, which you have to clean up, but it ends up being quite nice in the end. Now on our second parts tree, we do of course have our firewall, our dashboard here, the front suspension, the rear suspension, the upper A-arms, the cross brace, the rear spring, the differential cover, and it looks like a couple of radiator hoses. Now one thing that was added into the 69 Corvette, which of course Ravel has here accurately, are the little map pockets into the dashboard because in the 68 it's all flat in here and that was one of the complaints is that there wasn't enough storage in the car so that's been of course uh, replicated here correctly look at those sunken gauges just like the real thing and of course we have our three pedals clutch brake and gas look at the nice detail on that front suspension and the rear axle all of this, of course, pops into the car very nicely. There is a sink mark here that you can fill and sand over. 
on our front brace. There, you, there it is right there. And then on this side, of course, some mold marks, but you know, you know how to clean them up at this stage. Yep, number 16 hobby blade and some sandpaper. Now we have the remainder of our engine components as well as our sport mirrors and uh, under hood details. So fan, distributor, uh, brake master cylinder, starter motor, the steering box, the little differential, the front um, steering linkage, pardon me. I do believe that's the oil filter. There's that heater thing windshield wiper bottle, steering column, headrests, cylinder heads, exhaust manifolds, there's our fan cover, our tricarbs, our tricarb manifold, the sport mirrors, more hoses, and our belts and pulleys. So bringing this up into the camera so you can see the nice detail. Look at how clean and crisp and cool all this is. There's even like casting numbers on those manifolds. Really well done job by Ravel. So again, well worth the detail. And our final white components consist of our door panels individually molded as well as all of this is our radiator, our backs of our bucket seats, the rear or the wheel backs, pardon me, steering wheel and shock absorbers. And again, bringing this up to the camera, you can see all that nice detail going on there. Very beautifully done. Turning it over, there are sink marks, mold marks, but again, they can be sanded out or filled quite easily. So, very nicely done. Now we get into my favorite part, which is, of course, the chrome tree. And as you can see, we've got a lot of really awesome details. The American five-spoke mag wheels sitting here. Valve covers chrome side mirrors, if you don't want the white ones. We've got our big lake pipe sitting here, as well as our rear bumper and front bumper. This is a nice piece. You just need some Citadel uh, Nuln oil to paint into the vents here and wipe off the tops. Our license plate, our tr uh, triangular air cleaner. And then the springs and the alternator, the little fuel pump, and a rear view mirror, and all kinds of goodness. And if you're looking for the most recent release of this Corvette kit, check out the 2017 edition of the 69 Corvette Coupe. It's a Yenko 2-in-1 Motor City muscle car. Just for you guys that want the latest. Okay, look at that nice detail on those wheels. And then there's our grill with the correct circular um, turn signal lenses in there. Very nice chrome on this. Turning it over, of course, now we're looking at our mold marks. These ones you can get rid of. Paint the black back flat black. <laughs> Say that 30 times. And then uh, carry on. But again, very nice work. Very clean and crisp couple of mold marks here but you won't see it uh, you can scrape those out and then those all fit into the carburetor again very nice chrome work very nice detailing now we have our clear plastic components and here you can see the windshield which also has the sun visors molded in and then our rear window as well as the four red taillights. And on two of these, you're going to have to paint a little silver circle in there for the backup light. Again, nice work by Ravel. You can see they're quite simple in here. <laughs> two mold marks right on the sun visors. So, But that's okay because you can scrape those off and then paint your sun visors. Whatever color, black or whatever they were. And uh, our rear window, of course, has a little side pieces. So again, quite nice. Quite nice indeed. And then here's our little red tail lamps. They do have the little uh, circular pattern in here. Uh, no, spiral pattern. It's not really a spiral. You know what I mean. It looks like the real reflectors. So again, very nice work by Ravel. And here we have our tires, which are Goodyear GT radials. Now, I'm not exactly sure if radials were, are correct for this car or if this is sort of, uh, you know, pseudo-updated. Um, but at any rate, these are nice, good, solid tires. 
Revell has made them for numerous years. These ones, of course, you got to cut off of this rubber tree and cut over here. And then you can put them in your spinning tool and just sand down the, uh, what do you call it, the flash, the rubberized flash in here. There is a nice tread pattern, as you can see. And the letters are quite high. Now, you can carefully paint the very tops of these so you get that uh, cool effect. Or you can paint these as solid white. Or you can even turn them around this way and have none of the lettering and just have it smooth. So again, some very cool tires from Ravel. And finally, we have our decal sheet with these cool license plates, 4408 from Illinois. And then SS427 from California, more of the modern style California plate. Then we have all kinds of little gauges and things. Turn signal lamps. They really gave you all the decals. You could shave off all the uh, molded names and everything, scripts on the car, and replace them all with these decals. Then there's the very awesome Baldwin Motion Corvette stripes sitting here, as well as different Baldwin Motion um, little logos and decals. The heartbeat of America is Chevrolet. You get those as license plates. A little cross 427 air cleaner decal and under the hood decals. Very nicely done, very well executed. I'll just bring this up into the camera. You can see all the different details and whatnot. Very cool, very well thought out, and very well executed by Ravel. And here we have a 1969 Ravel Corvette kit that I have built back in the past. Now this one, of course, isn't a Baldwin Motion one. It's kind of a combination between the um, the sports coupe and the convertible. These wheels and tires, I do believe, are from an AMT kit. But there's those lake pipes there. A little sport mirror. This one I used the convertible hood on. You can see the nice tail lamps there. I needed to paint the little white in there for the backups. I don't have a license plate on it, of course. But still, pretty good. This is a Tamiya metallic blue. I love this color. <laughs> there it is there on the side. But yeah, you can see just how nice this model is. There, of course, is the convertible hood with the small hood bulge, which is very uh, typical to a sort of a low-class model Corvette. And here I have another 1969 Corvette with the coupe. This one is, of course, the orange one. I do believe this is the 1989 edition. You can see, of course, the GM rally wheels, or the Chevy rally wheels. This one does have the Goodyear GT radials on here, but again, the sports mirror and uh, the regular 427 hood. Now, I did make a little mistake in my video. I did say that the gas tank was somewhere back here but really it's sitting on top of the spare tire. Well, if you turn the car upside down. Yeah, it's sitting on top of the spare tire. What am I talking about? And, oh, another feature here is the rear window in these models, you could actually pop this thing out in the real car. And these little pinstripes are from some AMT model kit again. I thought they just looked nice. The color on here is actually the orange plastic. I clear coated it with some Tamiya Clear and uh, you can see the nice results on this. So again, notice how nicely these Corvette kits fit together and just sort of how awesome they are as a model. And that completes our look at Ravel's 1969 Baldwin Motion Corvette.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that great unboxing video of the Ravel 1969 Baldwin Motion Corvette. And tune in next week as we take a look at some other great kits from 1969. And if you love these model kit reviews, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family all throughout Facebook. And remember to check us out online at www.monster-hobbies.ca for all our current model car kits and model kit supplies. And until next time, everybody, remember to keep it under 130 miles an hour.